Micha. Today we have our fourth session and we start today with a question because the audience want to have a dialogue with us and Rudy Ray was so nice and so kind to ask you something. And the question is, and I will read it, how about talking about augmented reality software and software tool chains around that? And then you ask, Rudy, I guess you mean augmented reality? If yes, I will add it to our topic list. That's what we are doing today. And yeah. Rudy says, yes, exactly. Augmented reality was meant. So our first yeah. question from the audience. And now we talk about exactly this for Rudy. For Rudy, augmented reality. Yes. What is actually augmented reality? That's the first question, I think, because maybe okay. some people, <laughs> they don't know what it is. <laughs> it is basically, I would say, an interactive format or experience and it mixes together real world and computer generated content so basically that's pretty much the definition so and what you need to have augmented reality is you need some kind of sensors so like a camera or microphones and then the sensors They, they sense something and they record some information from the environment. Then you have some kind of mixed reality content. And so basically two kinds of content, something that is artificial and something that comes from the real world. And these inputs you have to combine in a meaningful way. So this is basically what it is. And because I'm... And do you have a question? Yes, that's very interesting. But I... Think about the use case, which could be the use case that you mix reality with digital information? That's a good question because, you know, when you want to just build a system and the system you want to build, it has augmented reality, right? So, and then I have built a system with augmented reality, but there's no use case for it. So it doesn't make any sense. One example would be you have a maintenance worker, some service worker, and they have these HoloLens for instance, or some other augmented reality glasses, they are wearing that. And then they have to maintain some kind of machine. And while they're wearing these headsets, this is recorded with a camera. They are maybe connected to a remote service worker that can give them instructions. And on the glass, you have some content that is at the moment relevant for the current situation, for the system fault or what they have to maintain or whatever is relevant at the moment. And then they can work better and solve the problem in a better way and react faster and such stuff. So this would be one example. Another example would be medical stuff that's, for instance, a surgeon could operate even remotely, you know, and then see that basically a camera is filming the patient and then certain information from the camera is detected if there's you know, cancer tissue that has to be removed or whatever. And this is basically detected in real time on the fly. And it guides the surgeon, for instance, in a certain way that basically the medical operation becomes more successful in the end. So that would be some use cases that I see for augmented reality. And yeah, from the requirements perspective, you already see we have these sensors. You have a camera and microphones or even olfactorical sensors, whatever. You need some kind of this real world input. And you have to process in real time. That is what I already mentioned. And then from my computer science background, I already see, okay, this consume a lot of computation power and these algorithms to detect certain stuff. There's also lots of machine learning and artificial intelligence, neural networks involved in this kind of stuff. So you see a lot of performance computation power is needed and this is highly performance relevant, the whole topic. So you have to have your machine under control, so to say. From the use case, you already see what kind of requirements you will have. And then you see the requirements. They are quite sophisticated from computer science perspective. And that's why the platforms, that's what we actually want to talk about, the, the tool chains, the software tool chains, they are super huge. They are not always easy to master. And basically every big tech player like Google, Microsoft, Apple, they have all their own augmented reality tool chains because, I mean, they can build that. They have the money and the resources to do that, the knowledge and everything. It's a big market, of course. And that's why they want to position them on the market as a player in these fields. And then basically you have, when you talk about which tool chain should I use, then you basically, you can Google, Microsoft, Apple, and then there's a few others. And then basically you might have some kind of vendor lock-in in the end. So basically if you're 
use the Apple stuff, of course, it can only run on Apple devices. It's clear. And, and if you're Microsoft, then maybe on Android, or yeah, maybe it runs on Android, but Linux or some kind of embedded hardware that runs on Linux, difficult. You know, they want to sell their Windows IoT. Yeah. And Google will only run on Android, not on iOS, for instance. So this is the problems that arise from that. Yeah. Okay. How will be the future? The future? I mean, I can't predict the future. But the thing is that, I mean, there's also something like Unity, for instance, an open platform that runs on all major platforms, for instance, a 3D engine, actually a gaming engine, but it has also tools to implement AR like a kind of content. What you can also do, I mean, it depends on your use case. That's why you have to really focus on your use case. You have to have a certain level of expertise, of course, if you can even build your own tool chain. That's not a problem, actually, with OpenCV and this kind of stuff, but it takes a lot of work. You believe that all this AR worlds will be separated? The Apple world, the Microsoft world, the Facebook meta world, the whatever world, that mm. there was the separation that nobody will be able to communicate that cross-platform is not possible in that area? Or do you think that there could be on some agreements or some interconnectivity? Because if that will be yeah. a major marketplace for industrial companies, the question is if some market law, market competition topics might influence that companies like Apple, like Microsoft, like Meta have to cooperate. Like we saw that in other cases, each big tech player has its own AR bubble, you know, that that would be, that could be a case. So for instance, that Apple would be more for the artist designer kind of bubble and Microsoft, because lots of industrial use cases is running on Microsoft and Google I don't know, Google has also its kind of niche in the end, but it could be that as you're talking about that certain interfaces are developed, but I don't have any idea how these interfaces are supposed to look like because there's also these hardware and also this problems and the hardware that it's running on is highly vendor specific because for instance, the Apple stuff is running on Apple hardware with a special Apple hardware acceleration and so on. Even, I mean, Apple has even its own chips, so it will be hard. You cannot simply just convert a Microsoft HoloLens thing to an Apple thing. That's not possible. When you talk about the future, this will be a major obstacle, actually. You need some kind of interconnectivity here. And nobody wants to wear Apple a Vision Pro or HoloLens all the time. And you don't want to have a HoloLens and a Google AR lens. And this actually needs three of these devices at home that you basically can take part in every bubble that yeah. is out there. You know, it's a bit like also with the big streaming platform, for instance, you know, that you also have certain content. And then in the end, also people... They are starting to ditch the streaming platforms and are starting to download torrents again, you know, because they <laughs> want to. this missing interconnectivity is one thing that vendor lock-in is one thing. And then you have mentioned the legal aspect. For instance, you can't have a single competitor on the market. It would be a monopole that would also not be legal. Plus on top, the whole privacy issues and things like that that comes on top, especially in the European Union. As a tech guy, I would not underestimate it, what it means. There's cool possibilities out there for AR, that's for sure. In everyday use case that we get in touch every day in our jobs, that's the thing. So, What about to ask our audience again? What do you think? Have you another question? And then we could discuss it further on. Yes, that's actually a good one. So we can even dive more deeply into the AR topic. We have also lots of other topics to discuss. But if you have any input, yeah, please let us know. And we are happy to have another podcast or tech talk next week. Perfect. See you next week. See you. Bye-bye.